All right. So downloaded the data, done some manipulations on it, and then you had to go away and do something else like make a cup of coffee. You come back and Oh, and you remembered to save your file, your script file, before you did that. <clears throat> so you closed our studio and went, did other stuff for a while. Now you want to start things up again. Um, so we go and we find our studio and we start it. And it pops up. And we see the environment is empty. There's Our files are missing. What's going on? OK, this is. This is the point of panic that most students experience at least once. Um, um, the problem is, if you look up here, project none. And I've restarted R and it, or our studio. And sometimes, if you're lucky, it will automatically restart with the last project that you used. That's most likely the case. But sometimes, if you've done a couple of different things, you end up in this state where you, you feel like you've lost everything. But because you used projects, and you're smart, what you have to do is check project and say, ah, I'm not in the COVID-19 project. And go, okay. Change to COVID-19. And there we go. So now I have my, my reference file. And, uh oh. Where did I, well, there's the Italy figure. Where did I save it? Oh, that's my figure. Let's see what happens if I go file, save as. Uh, oops, because the last place I had opened a file from was in the blog uh, repository. It's actually pulled it up there. So I'm gonna fix that right now, sorry. COVID-19, save it here. Okay, that's a nice trick, by the way. If you're confused about where a file has gone, if you go file save as, it'll usually open it up in the last place where that file was saved. Okay, so, but we still have an empty environment. <clears throat> um, this is why I recommend you uh, write scripts like this and then save your, your work. So the key is you save the, the code that creates the data objects, not the data objects themselves, because those can always be changed or accidentally deleted or all sorts of bad stuff can happen to them. But in this case, all I have to do is just do, put my cursor up there on the first line, and then do command enter a few times, loads the data back from there, mutates it, and bingo, I've got Italy confirmed back again. Okay. So what we want to do is make a graph. And our graph is going to have the date on the x-axis and the number of cumulative cases, or then incident cases, actually, is what we want to analyze uh, on the y-axis. So let's make that plot. I use ggplot package, which is part of the tidyverse, um, because it allows me to do lots of things really easily. Doesn't mean there aren't other ways to do this in R, but ggplot makes things a lot easier. It does require a mental model that's a little different from the other graphics. If you've learned base R graphics or trellis graphics, there's a bit of a mental model change that you have to go through, but if you've not learned anything else and you're learning ggplot, then you'll be just fine. So the first thing I have to do is tell ggplot which data to use, and I want to use Italy confirmed. And then the second concept that's important for ggplot is the mapping. Mapping says which variables in the data are going to be represented by which graphic objects. Here we go. Now when I gesticulate, you'll be able to see. OK, so we use a little helper function, AES, for aesthetic to say aesthetics are what ggplot calls things that are on the graph. So the x axis is going to be date, and the y axis is going to be, let's do two. All right, let's see what happens. So run ggplot. Huh, okay. 
So I've got a graph. It's got date on the x-axis and cumulative cases on the y, but it's empty. So that's kind of a bummer. Why is it empty? Well, it's empty because we haven't told ggplot uh, what kind of geometric objects to put on the graph. And so we do this by using functions that start with geom underscore, geom for geometric object. And in this case, we're gonna use geom point. It's a function, so it's got those two parentheses after it. And like above, we use the pipe to pipe data from one function to the other. In ggplot, we use a plus, just the way it is. Uh, it's a historical artifact of the way GG, ggplot was developed. Okay, so whoa, look at that. That looks like exponential growth. Whew. Um, one way to confirm that it's exponential growth is to look at this on a log uh, scale. And so I can change in ggplot, I can change the scale of the y-axis by doing scale underscore y. I have lots of options. It's default to continuous. In this case, what I want is log base 10. OK. Oh, neat. Well, this is really cool. OK, so. Okay, so we're getting a warning here. Transformation induced infinite values in the continuous y-axis. That's these points here, the zeros. Uh, you can't take the, well, you can take the log of a zero. <clears throat> you just get negative infinity. So it's not very happy about that. This is cool because this line is not actually a straight line. It's curved, which suggests that the rate of the epidemic is not, it's not growing exponentially, but um, let's go back to figuring out well, what, I, what I really want to do is I'm going to trim these points off down here because there's an early phase in the epidemic when most of these initial cases were probably travel related people coming into Italy from outside the country. That's how the, that's how the virus got there, but it's not really following a exponential growth pattern or any kind of growth pattern, They're just sort of random events. It's once community spread starts, that things really kind of take off. So let's see what we've got. Let's save my file because what I want to do is look. Um, so it looks like if we look at incident cases starting on February 21, those incident cases are all not zero except for that one. <clears throat> so Oh, I know. So what I could do is I could just filter out. That's going to skip that one, but that's okay. Actually, I think that'll be better. I'm just going to filter out all the rows. Oh no, that's not going to work. Hmm. Okay, I want rows that are later than the 21st of February and have incident cases bigger than zero. Those are the two logical conditions that I want. So I'm gonna go back to my Italy confirmed and I'm just gonna add a pipe here. Like this, I'm gonna say filter. I've got two conditions. The first condition is that date has to be bigger than 2020, oops, And The second condition, which also has to be true. So it, these are going to be combined with a logical and, if you've done any other programming, is that incident cases have to be oops, bigger than zero. So it's going to get rid of that outlier. Let's see what we end up with if we do this now. Shouldn't give us a warning. There we go. Now we're in business. Okay. Hmm, cool. Wow. Almost looks like there's three different exponential growth rates going on. 
here it's decelerated from that initial growth and then and then it's decelerated again hmm. fascinating all right um my reference what did i do next okay i in the other graph <clears throat> what i wanted to do was just fit the model to these initial points and um, and then make the plot, make the prediction for the rest of them. So to do that, I'm um, gonna kind of cheat a little bit here. I'm gonna add a filter right inside ggplot. And I'm just gonna say, let's see, the previously, so I want six days, I want Italy confirmed, but only for date less than or equal to 2020, oops, 2020, 02, uh, five. That's got the right. Yeah, let's see what happens if I do that. Huh. I get, I get nothing. Why? Oh, <laughs> whoops. Uh, I, so here I only got, I only included data after February 21st, but here I put it after February 5th, less than February 5th. So of course there's no data. So I need that and it's March 5th that I want. There we go. Twenty second. That's also there's a bit of a splurge there, but um, now I can add a line to this graph, fitted line, uh, very easily in ggplots. One of the things I love about it by doing geom smooth, and I want a straight line, just a linear line, not a smooth curve or anything else like that. So I have to add method equals. Otherwise it'll fit a kind of a spline to this thing and it'll be all curvy and that's not what I want. I want a simple straight line. Just like that. Okay, that's pretty neat actually. It's, um, yeah, you can see that it's not following a straight line. Um, residuals start negative, go positive, and then go negative again. So that's clearly an indication that our exponential model is not working. Um, by fitting a straight line to the log transform data, this is basically an exponential growth model. Um, and it's clearly too simple for, for what, we're, what we're after here, which is fascinating. Um, okay, now what I wanna do is I'm going to do, I'm gonna just save this this is going to be a sort of my base graph, if you like. And I'm going to save this. I'm just going to call it P1 for plot one. So I run that. And it doesn't, I mean, even if I, if I, if I do P1 again down here now, it'll remake the plot. But I don't want to do that. I just want to save it so that I can add some stuff to it later. Um, okay. I, I should be keeping track of how long this takes. Okay, so there's my first graph. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop here and save my file again. And <clears throat> um, so this will, I'm going to stop this video at this point. We've made a graph, added a straight line to it. In the next video, we'll get the underlying fitted model out of this thing and then make some predictions for it and add those to the graph and see how, it, see how they do.